Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in the matrix algebra portion of this playlist. Now, before we start today's topic, I want to flash a matrix that we covered before. It's a three by two matrix, and it looks like this. And we're going to discuss transpose today. So the transpose of a matrix A denoted by a prime or a capital T, both pronounced a transpose is obtained from a by interchanging the rows and the columns so this first row in a transpose was the first column in a the second row here was the uh, second column in a but it also goes the other way so this first column in a transpose was the first row in a the second column in a transpose was the second row in a the third column in A transpose was the third row in A. So to think of it a little more mathematically, if the ith row, the element of the ith row and jth column of A is the same element of the jth row and the ith column of A, so, they, so the indices has, has reversed. So A transpose is A sub J I, you know, where J goes from one to two and I goes from one to three. In, when we were talking about matrix A, we said A, I, J, so the indices reversed, and that's essentially what we're doing with the transpose. Now, a scalar is its itself, so A transpose is equal to A, right, because it's just a number, and you can't interchange the rows and the columns because there's only it's only one. Now, note here that A is not bold. And it's lowercase, so that is means it's a scalar. And the transpose of a transpose is the original matrix back. So if we look at these in in R, and let's see if I can do this. So we enter a matrix into A, and this is it. So this is what we're talking about up here. The dimensions is three by two, right? Three rows, two columns. The transpose of A is now a two by three matrix where you just interchange the columns and the rows. The transpose of a transpose is the original matrix back. Right? Um, if we have a scalar five and then we take the transpose of five, we just get five back. So let's look at symmetric matrices. Now, a symmetric matrix, a matrix, matrix is symmetric if it equals its transpose. So, if A equals A transpose, then it's a symmetric matrix. And to write that mathematically, you say A I J, right? So, this is an element of matrix A is equal to A J I. That means it's been transposed. If those are equal, then it's a symmetric matrix. And that's for all I and J. So here's an example. These two are symmetric. Notice the first row is equal to the first column. Second row is equal to the second column. Third row is equal to the third column. Another way to think about symmetric is that elements in the off diagonals are equal. And, and, and that's kind of a vague way to say it. But this is equal, you know, the corresponding element on the other side of the diagonal are equal. 4 and 4, minus 7, minus 7, 9. But to do this mathematically, what we're saying up here is the second row, first column is equal to the first row, second column. If we look at this one, this is the third row, second column. That's equal to the second row, third column. And so that's what I mean by it. You know, that's the way I kind of think of it. The off diagonals are equal. They're symmetric. You know, if you were to fold this over on top of itself, they, you would get the same numbers. And so clearly, symmetric matrices have to be square. N equals P. Right, because if you transpose a non-square matrix, so A is three by two, you transpose it gets two by three. So there's no way that A and A transpose can be equal. So only square matrices can be uh, symmetric. So here, if we look at the R code, 
we enter a matrix into A, and it's a three by three matrix, and we say, is A equal to the transpose of A? And notice it goes through and compares each element, and they're all true. So A is a symmetric matrix. Another way to do this, maybe more efficiently, is what's called the all dot equal. So we put A as the first function, or the you know first component, and transpose of A as the second. And then it goes and compares them component by component. And if they're all true, it brings back a true. If not, it says false and then tries to help explain where that difference is. Now, let's look at some special matrices and then we'll call our quits for this video. The first one is what's called a diagonal matrix. And it's a square matrix with the off diagonals being zero. Now, the diagonal elements, some of them can be zero. But the, the, what makes it diagonal is that the off diagonal elements are all zero. And you can use what's the diag function. So the diag of 3, 10, and minus 7 creates this matrix right here. Now, you can apply the diag function to any square matrix. And what it does is it picks off the diagonal elements and then creates a, a diagonal matrix with that. So if A is not a diagonal matrix like this, but then we take the diag of it, then it takes the diagonal elements and creates a diagonal, ele diagonal matrix you know, with the off element zero. Now, if we look at this in R, there's a diag function in R. So it takes a vector. Remember, C is the, it's a command in R that says, hey, what, is in these parentheses is a vector. Now it can be a character vector, a numeric vector, but it's a vector. Then take the diag of it and it creates a matrix with those elements down the diagonal. Here, if we have, if we already have a matrix A, and now one of the oddities of R, I don't know if it's an oddity, but you have to understand how it works. If you take the diag of a matrix, it actually just picks off the diagonal elements, 3, 10, and 9. But then if you take the diag of the diag, so the diag of A is a vector. So then the diag of a vector creates a matrix. So that's it. And so it's just good to know how the functions in R work. So now an upper triangular matrix is a square matrix with zeros in the lower portion of it. Now some of the numbers in the diagonal or above or the you know upper part of the matrix can be zero but to be an upper triangular matrix then these lower numbers have to be zero the lower triangular part. And oh so actually if you look at it mathematically so AIJ so that's an element of the matrix is zero if I is greater than J. So here, this is row three, column one. So I is three, J is one. So I is greater than J. So it, we make that element be zero. So this is how you say it, describe it mathematically. A lower triangle is, I don't know if opposite's the right word, but the diagonal and below are can be anything, but then the numbers or the elements above the diagonal have to be zero. This is called a lower triangular matrix. Now the identity matrix is a diagonal matrix with all ones, and you describe it mathematically like this. If AIJ is equal to one, if I is equal to J, and AIJ, so the element of the matrix is zero if they're not equal. Right, and down the diagonal, this is row one, column one. So I and J equal, so it has to be one. So this is row N, column N. So I and J equal has to be one. And if you look at any of the off diagonals, I and J are not equal, so it's zero. So a quick example, I three, so that's a, th a three by three matrix, the identity matrix, the diagonal with ones down the middle. To create this in R, you'd say diag three, now, if diag is a number, then it creates that matrix. So it's a three by three matrix with ones down the middle. Now, the next two 
you know, thing, a vector and a matrix of all ones is sprinkled so much in the theory of linear models. It's important to point it out, point these out. Now we're going to do more with this in later videos, but this is what it is. So little j is just a vector of ones. Capital J is a matrix of all ones. And the R code, I'll, as always, I'll post the R code in the uh, comments section. And then to end it, we also have vectors and matrices of all zeros, which are also sprinkled throughout the theory of linear models. So a little, a little O and big O, or capital O, lowercase o, are represented by a matrix of all zeros. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.